Hey guys, Hunter Elliott here, RangeOut.com. Check it out. Finally, the Colt Delta Elite Gen 2, if you will. This is Colt's reimagining of the classic Delta. So, y'all know I'm a huge fan of the 10 millimeter. You know I'm a huge fan of the 1911. And it's been speculated that I'm a huge fan of Colt. So, uh, this is kind of like what I would call an amalgamation of some of my very favorite things. There are several new features. Gawking serrations, different stocks, sights, all that. I'm going to go over all that stuff in great detail at the end of the video review, as I always do. But for now, what I'm going to do is we're just going to put a few mags downrange, just so you can kind of see how the gun's running, recoil and everything. I'm actually starting out with some PMC. This is a 200 grain projectile, which is actually, you know, as we know, for 10 millimeter to really come in its own, you need to reload. Um, except for a few of the boutique manufacturers, but the PMC 200 grain bullet is actually not bad for the 10 millimeter, especially if you're out doing some training or range time or whatever. Here we are wrapping up the review on the new Colt Delta Elite Gen 2 is what I want to call it. Uh, right off the bat I want to show you that there is no magazine in the gun, the slide is locked to the rear, chamber is empty so it's safe to talk about. Uh, this particular pistol was introduced in the NRA show in 2016. We've had it for uh, a couple months now, I've got about 350 rounds or so through it. And uh, there's absolutely nothing about this gun that I like. I mean, I've shot it, I've tried to like it, and um, there's nothing good I can say about this pistol. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, to <laughs> I'm totally I'm kidding. I'm not buying it. <laughs> I'm, totally, I'm totally kidding. Uh, anyway, real quick, we're going to go over the differences between this and what I'm going to call the Gen 1 Delta Elite that was reintroduced several years ago. Starting from the top, this is running Novak, three-dot type sights. This one here is what they're calling the carry rear, and it is adjustable for windage with a little set screw. It's got a speed hammer instead of the commander style rival hammer that they used to run. This is the type of hammer that you would see like on the Gold Cup Trophy, as well as an upswept beaver tail type grip safety with a palm swell. That palm swell's purpose is, as we all know, when you grasp a 1911, you have to disengage that grip safety in order for the trigger to you know, go through the rear, discharge the gun, this palm swell is just an added little bit of insurance, so when you grab that gun, it's kind of just ensuring that you're disengaging that grip safety. Moving to the thumb safety, this is an extended type thumb safety. It's got a little bit more real estate on it to be able to get your finger off and on to disengage it correctly. With that said, the older style Colt safeties I've never had any issue with, but I can also uh, understand the reasoning behind it for a gun that would serve well as a concealed carry in town or on the trail. We'll talk a little about that in a minute. Moving over here, the trigger, it's an aluminum three-hole design. Uh, the Colt got away from that nylon type face, which was fine, but this trigger here is a little more aesthetically pleasing, as well as it does have a little bit better feel to it. The cocking serrations here, they've got away from the traditional types of cocking serrations. These are angled and a little more aggressive. The reasoning behind that is this particular pistol is running a dual recoil spring system. Uh, and that serves two purposes. A, it, it does add a lot more spring tension to the gun. Being 10 millimeter, you can understand you want to beef up that recoil spring system. As well as the dual recoil spring system does have a lot more life in it. But since the, since the springs are a little stiffer, adding these type cocking set races to them allows you to get a, a, a really good solid purchase on the slide when you're trying to rack it. Personally for me, I like the looks of the more traditional cocking set races. But these are fine, they're well enough, and always function over form. Colt also went with some more standard type composite stocks, whereas the old had the wraparound rubber stocks, which I really never cared for. If you notice here, the receiver is undercut a little bit here at the trigger guard. That allows you to get your finger a little bit deeper into the gun. So all these changes, not, not anything huge. It's, a, it's a, a bunch of small changes that Colt has done, and I think all added together really adds a lot of usability to the gun. Shootability wise, as far as reliability and accuracy, not a great deal between this and the Gen 1, but it is a little more user friendly. With the stronger recoil spring system, this gun has a tendency to lint wrist. 
a little more than the average 1911. When both my mother and Allison shot it for the first time, you know, this, it wasn't a failure to return the battery, but the slide was, a, you know, a, a couple inches away from returning the battery. And I thought, oh, you know, what the hell's going on? Is there something the matter with the pistol? Um, eternally, they're uh, basically the same as the Gen 1, uh, but once Allison kind of got a better grip on it, as well as my mother, and started really running the gun like you're supposed to, that problem went away. Completely. Completely. You know, so it's a little bit of a learning curve when you're running this gun. If you're curious about the type of ammunition that we shot, accuracy-wise or all that, there is a chart on rangehot.com in the written article that's going to talk all about that that portion of the review, as well as a lot of the technical specifications of the pistol. Anyway, if I sit here, I'm going to talk the ears off a wooden Indian. So, Allison, she's got she's got maybe 100 rounds through the gun. I am really impressed. I fell in love with the 10 millimeter cartridge the first time I shot the original Delta Elite. It definitely has more recoil to it compared to the 9 millimeter that I'm used to shooting on a regular basis. Uh, but it is not unmanageable, and I don't have the uh, big arms that this guy here has. Uh, so it takes a little bit more strength for me to rack the slide and uh, a little bit more effort for me to hold the gun nice and steady with the best grip I can give it so that I'm not limp wristing and uh, running into issues. But it didn't, didn't take but, uh, but a magazine for, really, for me to really get that straightened out. Uh, I'm definitely a fan of the three-dot Novak sights. Uh, I like three-dot sights in general, and I think these particular set of sights are definitely an improvement. I also like the palm swell on a grip safety, so that really helped me feel like I had a nice, uh, complete grip on the pistol itself. Uh, I'm, I really approve of the changes they've made. So let's talk a little bit about the 10 millimeter auto cartridge. That is my favorite conventional handgun cartridge. It it really, you know, nine millimeter 45 auto, loving the pieces. But when you're talking about energy downrange, the 10 millimeter leaves them in the dust. And I mean, the 10 millimeter surpasses the 357 Magnum in energy, and you're you're running that in an auto-loading handgun, this magazine-fed, eight-round capacity plus one in the chamber. So you've definitely got a benefit over a revolver that would be chambered in 357 for ergonomics, capacity, energy, and how quick you can reload it. So. You know, this would work great for a round of town concealed carry, as well as if you're going hiking or camping or, you know, on the trail. That So it's, you know, this gun would serve really well as double duty for a lot of scenarios, as well as home defense. I mean, Absolutely. you know, it, I can't stress enough how, how impressive the 10 millimeter cartridge is when loaded correctly. It, it is a little loud, a little bit more recoil than what some people are accustomed to. But here again, you know, that's the drawback when you're when you're carrying a man's gun. No, no I'm, 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 I'm there with the kid. That was kind of sexist. I apologize. But y'all y'all know what I mean. It's a, it's it's a damn nice pistol. Detail stuff this pistol because I want to look at the innards. I want to see how well this gun is held up. And I know 400 rounds or just under is not a tremendous amount. If there's a flaw in the gun, if there's something that was majorly wrong with it within that amount of rounds, it would show up. So I need to see that for myself. I can see Colt has not perfected the art of the self-cleaning pistol. It would be awesome. There's the, the dual recoil spring setup right there. You can see. Let's take a look at the barrel lugs. They look pretty good. No chips. Doesn't look like they've been kind of peened over. So uh, barrel, barrel lugs look good. The mating lugs in the slide, same deal. Everything looks pretty crisp. The trigger, not bad. It was breaking right on five pounds. A little bit of tack up, a little bit of over travel. So far, all the inners look good. Oh, look at there. Colt was good enough to put a kink in the uh, plunger spring. So when you take the thumb safety out, the plunger don't go flying across the room. Slide, trigger, hammer hooks, sear, disconnector, or it should be noted this is a nylon mainspring housing. That's not a problem. I've got several 1911s with the nylon mainspring housing. Never had trouble with them. Never known anybody to have trouble with them, but here again. Also, take note that it is a uh, Series 80 type fire pin safety. Here again, I, I prefer the Series 80, especially for a gun I would carry. In condition one, Allison, I want to give you the last word in edgewise. What do you? What are your uh, your final words to the uh, the limited audience? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So.
So, final thoughts. Nice work. If you've got any questions or comments, please come by. Find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, the whole nine yards for social media. I love feedback, good and bad. So, if you've got a question, a comment, or a, a critique, let me know. If you've got something you want to see, let me know. I, I love to hear from the people that are watching the videos and reading the articles. And I, here again, thank you very much. I want you to take care of yourselves and each other, and I look forward to seeing y'all at the range.